Hi, I'm Max Spainauer. And I'm Troy McCormick. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Hi, I'm Troy McCormick, and welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Today I'm with Scott and Logan Fromey, two guys that are father and son team that like to video and share knowledge about early pioneer skills and survival techniques. And Scott, tell me a little bit about the Backwoodsman's Institute. Well, the Backwoodsman's Institute kind of started, we actually put started putting YouTube videos on about two years ago. And about six months prior to that, you know, Logan got, was on the the internet and got to watching some YouTube videos and and we had done some stuff filming prior but he goes he goes we could do this so yeah well good and, we, and you've got that interest in uh, kind of uh, uh, archery and, and hunting and mm -hmm. I say pioneer skills tell me what are some of the videos you've done well gee anywhere from traditional archery uh, actually you know harvest deer or fishing, anything, fence building, just we're pretty well geared to self-sufficient lifestyle from it. We even call us like a modern day pioneer, so to speak, you know, because yeah. those people that, that settled this area in those days had to know everything about anything, you right. know, it seems like on their own. And that's part of it. Fast always did fascinate me for years. And so I've tried, I kind of grew up in a, in a time era that, you know, I helped my grandma working in the garden and canning to, you know, where I still could remember and do a lot of things okay. from when I was a kid, and I just continued that stuff yeah. on. So Now, Logan, you've grown up with the, hearing about this and learning these skills from your dad, but you also have a military background and are recently home from Afghanistan. Yes, uh, me and my father both are in the, were in the military. I was a four-year infantryman in the Marine Corps, and uh, like you said, I've seen these videos when I was missing home. I yeah. missed what we had here in southern Indiana, and I watched them, I was like, Dad, we can do this. I know exactly what we need to get doing, and we need to do it. Because a lot of these skills are lost and are being lost. That's right. And, That's and one of those things we're going to talk about today is tanning a deer hide. Mm -hmm. And it's not just your normal, you send your hide off to a, a commercial place to have it hide. We're going to brain tan a deer hide today. Yeah. And what are the differences? Um, we were talking about the difference between buckskin and tanned hides. Mm -hmm. Tell us just a little bit of an overall about those differences and what we're going to do today. Well, basically, the difference between commercial leather and brain tanning is the the in a commercial tanning, you're actually taking the fibers of the of the hide and breaking it. Okay. And whereas in brain tanning, we're using the oils and the fats that are in the brains to kind of coat the fibers and then to limber them off and 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 make them soft that way. And then we're going to smoke it to keep preserve it in that position. So you're kind of dressing the skin, and this is how this is how primitive man and you know Native Americans right. did it, and our and they showed our pioneers how to do it, and settlers, you know. And so this is kind of in a survival type of situation where you can actually tan it from all the parts of that animal that that it provides. Now, for someone who's never done this before, which would include me. There are several steps along the way, mm -hmm. and we're going to kind of walk through those steps. So what's the first thing we're going to need to do? Let's say we, we've skinned our deer, and it's still wet. We haven't frozen it or anything, and I blink, believe we have a hide mm -hmm. that does that. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at what it takes to brain tan a deer hide. Okay, after you get your deer skinned, you know, the first step is to remove all the, the flesh and the membrane and the fat off of the, off the hide. One of the methods of doing it is using a fleshing beam. So this here is a fleshing beam. Um, you can actually make it one yourself. Uh, you can use a log, you can use PVC pipe or something, and a fleshing knife, which is basically has a, a little bit of a sharp edge on one side and more duller edge on the other. And you're actually just gonna scrape 
the you know get underneath the membrane and and scrape that off the hide so so what I'm going to try and get I'm going to go ahead and get started here now now if you notice right here's a, a hole here so we got to be really careful with the holes that we don't catch on to it so we're just going to get started underneath the fat and the, and the membrane of the muscle I'm going to start at the top I kind of it doesn't have to be started at the very edge you just get started and then you just keep working the hide all the way around but if you look right here you can see the difference in where the membrane you kind of see where the membranes are and there's actually fat in there and muscle in there and that's going to hinder your uh, the the hide from taking the the oils from the from the actual brains part of it so like I said, I'll just keep fleshing and working it here and spinning it around. Looking pretty good, Logan. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more brain tanning of a deer hide with Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Lawrence County is an unexpected destination found in the heart of southern Indiana rolling hills, offering recreational landscapes, a rich limestone heritage, and unique outdoor experiences. This area is limestone country, well known for limestone quarries and stone carving heritage. It's also the home of Spring Mill State Park, geocaches, the scenic East Fork of the White River, and underground caverns. Plan your adventure at limestonecountry.com or call 800-798-0769. After serving our country, serious injury shouldn't prevent our veterans from enjoying life. Paralyzed Veterans of America works with veterans to ensure that their health care and benefit needs are met, provides assistance with career needs, and offers challenging and rewarding activities. The Kentucky and Indiana chapter of PVA is also proud to provide adaptive sports and activities for its members. Paralyzed Veterans of America depends on the public's generosity to support its programs. Make your donation today and help give back to our nation's paralyzed heroes. Cave Country Canoes, located in the heart of Indiana's cave country, offers a variety of canoe rental trips from half-day outings for beginners to two-day adventures for the more experienced enthusiast. Our canoe trips follow the gently meandering Blue River through the wooded hills of southern Indiana. Abundant wildlife and great fishing opportunities abound. Go to cavecountrycanoes.com for more information about our canoe and kayak trips. Your next adventure is just a paddle away. All right, as, as we discussed before, this is an alternate way to flesh this deer hide. And before it was on that flesh and beam, now it's on the frame. And the one thing to remember is when you flesh, you get all this meat and everything off, the hide's gonna loosen up. This meat's holding it tight right now. So as I go, I'm gonna have to tighten my strings and keep this hide stretched so I can get at it and get all this uh, extra meat and fat off of it. Like, you, like Dad said, 90 degree, you wanna start it moving and then bring it down. You don't wanna dig into the, the hide because then you could possibly tear a hole in it. So you just wanna find a starting point I usually start towards the top, but we already have it here, so I'm just going to keep going with it. And that's all it is, just scraping, pulling that hide, the membrane away. And as you can see right there, that's the hide that you want to get to. And all this is the extra membrane. And it's really as easy as that. All right, after you got the, the flesh side scraped off, you're gonna flip the hide around and you're gonna start taking the hair off. Now, inside, right underneath the, the hair, it's kinda like our scalp. It's what we call grain and it holds the roots into the skin. You gotta remove that layer just to get to the, the fibers of the actual hide itself. And you can, you can start, I like starting at the top and you're gonna go with the hair. You think it'd be easier to go against the hair and just try to rip it off, but that's a lot harder than going with the hair and just peeling a little bit at a time. And with this, you especially wanna keep it at a 90 degree angle and just chop a little bit at a time, get to the skin, and then you can start peeling it away. And I'm gonna show you that. The thickest part of the hair is right along the back and it's got the thickest grain. And then also right here in the belly, it's real thick hair. It's real thick down here because deer bed down they got to keep their their body insulated from the cold ground so that's why their belly hair is really really thick all right we got all this sand down took the membrane off the flesh side and the grain off the the hair side so next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it loose from this frame and 
if you're gonna make clothing out of buckskin, you wanna have a material that you can work with. So this is a nice rectangular piece. You got a leg sticking out over here, but you can cut it off right where this baler twine hooks it up. And on this side, I stopped on scraping where the baler twine enters the hide. But you wanna keep it a, a material, the size or the shape that you wanna, that you can work with. So preferably a square rectangular shape. So I'm just gonna start cutting this off following this edge right now. And it comes off pretty easy. It's all dry. And when you're making clothing, the majority of this is gonna be off fall anyway. Okay, Scott, now the two important things of brain tanning a deer hide. One, you gotta have the deer hide, and two, you gotta have the brains. Right, tell me a little bit about uh, using brains for tanning. All right, now they say that every animal has the right amount of brains to tan its own hide. So like, like a rabbit has just enough to tan its hide, and a deer has enough to tan its hide. Yes. Okay. So, now the other thing, one thing about, you know, it's kinda easier to get the deer hides than it is to get the brains, unless you actually collect them yourselves out of for each right. one. So, But if somebody if, gives you some high... Yes, then, you, then you're going to have to go find the brains. Okay. <laughs> so the, it's, the one thing about if you know you're going to brain tan uh, some, some skins, go out and buy the brains ahead of time because there's not just, they just don't carry these in every grocery store. You know, they can, uh, some of the local ones, uh, grocery stores that I've, in the meat departments uh, that I've bought brains before, uh, they said they can get it to me, but it'd be several weeks before they can get some in. So it's just like, it's not... And, and this is pork brains? This is pork brains, yes. Okay. So any brains will work. So it's you can use same. beef brains, pork brains, but pork brains are a little easier to get a hold of, you know, and, and, and so we, I went and bought several pounds of pork brains. And, and, that's and, what and this is a one pound container? A one pound container. I use one pound per deer hide. Okay. And it, this is... It kind of, it's about the same size of a brain case of a, mm -hmm. a skull of a, a, a white-tailed deer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe a little bit more, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit more in there. So, <laughs> what's yeah. It, what's it look like? <laughs> this, it's, let's see if I can peel this open. Okay. There you Regular go. Regular brain. Kinda, that's brains, all right. <laughs> yeah. Now, what are we going to do with the brains? Okay. What I do, you could take them and just smear them into the hide and work them in it when it's in the raw hide, but that's not very pleasant to work with. No. So we're going to try and make it a little bit more pleasant to work with. Okay. So if you're in good standing with your wife, she can probably, <laughs> we can use my, the blender. Right? Use the blender. Ooh, if not, we're going to go to, you know, go to a garage sale or somewhere and pick Buy up a blender. Yes, yeah, right, one right. just to use for blender so we don't have to go so through that. I got, have warm water in here? I got a little bit of just tempered water, just, okay. just something. I put a little bit in there and we're gonna put it in there and liquefy it. It okay. just a little bit of water just helps it liquefy it in there. Now there's no secret herbs and special recipe or anything? No, that's it. Wow. That's as okay. easy as it gets. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what happens. All right. <laughs> Brains. We wanna start over? <laughs> no, we're okay. So all we're doing is like say liquefying it. So we have a pureed liquid. We got have a brain pureed. smoothie right here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now what I got is a pot of water that's got just enough water that the, the deer hide will cover the deer hide when okay. it's all the way in there. Great. So and I warm it up. I don't want it. You know, I just get it to a little bit, like I said, temp it, you know, to get it boiling, but you're going to have to let it cool off a little bit. So enough where you can stick your hand That's in. That's an interesting smell. You don't run across every day. <laughs> no. Great. Well, let's so, take it over and uh, let's add it in. All right. Great. All right. Like I said, I got this pot of warm water. It was boiling. I let it cool a little bit. And then I'm going to add the liquefied brains right into it. Okay, and then it's going to steep just for a little bit. Okay. 
kind of test the water. Make sure it's get stirred up there. And you can see, I don't know, it's kind of frothy looking. I don't know if you can kind of pan into the pot there. It's the brain, it's starting to gray up. It's actually cooking it a little bit, so it, it's graying up a little bit, and that's kind of what, what I'm after. The thing of it now is you don't want really hot, hot water because when you put the hide in there, you don't want the hide to cook. You want it just to be warm enough so that the oils in there can get down and coat all, all the fibers in there. So I believe that I let it cool off enough while I go. And so still a little bit warm, but I think it'll work pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of roll this piece of raw hide up and just set it right on in there. And it's just gonna soak up. Just gonna let it soak and push it down in there. And just work it down till it's all the way covered. And, and the amount of water you put in there, it, you just want it to cover the hide when it's in there. So, it, and even if you want to let it, after it's done, and want to set it overnight or something, put like a brick or a rock or something on top of it to weight it down inside there. So we'll go ahead and get this work down in there and, and situated. You can see that it's starting to basically just eat up that raw hide. So in there, so we'll just, Get that going. The short strokes really makes a difference and lets you control it. This it does. That's great. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Looking for adventure? Marengo Cave has it all. Explore the underground wonders of Marengo Cave with our two easy walking tours or go on an adventurous cave exploring trip with hard hats and lots of mud. Kids will love discovering gemstones at the Cave Springs Mining Flume. This U.S. National Natural Landmark has been open to the public since 1883 and provides breathtaking views of underground cave formations. Visit us online at MaringoCave.com and plan your visit today. Life Essentials in Brookston, Indiana provides the products you need to become more independent. Products like our journeyman wheelchair provide all-terrain access for the hunter and all-around outdoorsman. Every year, thousands of people are born with or acquire disabilities. Whether your special needs are for residential, commercial, agricultural, or just enjoying the outdoors once again, we customize our lifts and mobility products to fit your needs. We're raising you to new heights. Call today and we'll work with you to take back your life. From news updates and announcements to Twitter posts by co-host Troy McCormick, why wait until the next season of shows when you can follow us as we're filming them? Join us online to get the most current news on Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Blastmasters of Indianapolis, Indiana is your source for custom stone sandblasting. We etch limestone markers for gardens and home landscaping projects to pet memorial stones and address markers. We offer brick pavers for fundraising projects and large monument stones for memorials and parks. Contact us today for your custom sandblasted Indiana limestone markers and memorial projects. Okay, Scott, so what do we have here? All right, so now here's where we got the deer hide that's been soaking in the brain solution overnight. Like I said, I like to leave it in a solution overnight, just just a little added insurance. Sure. I don't let it set all days because it can get a little bit of rancid. You don't want to smell it too bad, yeah. Right, so at this point we're still good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and then we're gonna start uh, the, what it calls, the next step is like the ringing process. Okay. And you're not only, not only are you getting all the moisture out of the skin that you can, is you're actually forcing a lot of the oils through the skin so that okay. the recoat makes it's sure it's been it did. soaking, but giving it a little extra twist pushes a it double in there. check, okay, okay. a double check. So I'm just going to do a, just a little bit of a ring here, just enough so we don't I don't get soaking wet when I get to, <laughs> you know, doing a ringing over here. The initial ringing step. Yes. So I'm getting a, a lot of that out of there and out of the way, so I don't get too messy here. So. You know, that, that has, it has the look of like a chamois, like if you didn't wash in and dry mm -hmm. your car. Uh, it's got, it's got both that, uh, the color yeah. and, and it's got that feel and. Mm -hmm. Pretty, that's about as close as you can get to it is right there to explain them how it is. 
Okay, you can see that I got it all nice run rolled up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ring it on this post right here. So I'm going to go ahead and and what I'm going to use is you can use any kind of stick here. I'm using the old mop handle, you know, that was cut off. So right there, let's put the two ends together a little bit here to hold it. And then I'll just go ahead and twist. And you can see how all that water and everything's pushing, forcing itself out of there. Now, are you worried at all about tearing it? No, not at this point. It would take quite a bit to tear it. So it's actually, since, since you haven't, you know, it's still basically, you know, just raw, wet rawhide, it's pretty strong stuff. Now you got the hide that's it's wrung out, and what you're doing is you're stretching the hide as it dries. You're not really speeding up the process, so you'd like to have, you know, a nice day that's a real good drying day, so you're not out there all day long waiting for the hide to dry. So a good day, you know, has some sunshine maybe or some air moving will help, definitely help speed up the process. And as it's drying, you're basically stretching the hide to make it soft. Because like I said, the fibers are in there, they're wet now, it's drying, you're just wanting to limber them up and loosen them up. So as, you're, as it's drying, you're stretching. Now you can pull against a rope, you know, have a good tout rope or pull against, or a post that's kind of rounded on top to push against. But what I got, I had purchased one of these. This is like a breaking tool that they use for a lot of times commercial leather or some guys that do some tanning. You know, it kind of works out. All it is is a disc blade on a pipe where I can stick it over a T-post out, out in the yard. And, and actually what I'm doing is I'm putting it over there and as it's drying, I'm pulling this across it and stretching it. This is one of the final steps is the smoking. Now the reason why they did the smoking was like the brains and stuff was supposed to be coating of the, the fibers. Well now we're going to waterproof it by putting on the smoke and waterproof the fibers. So what I did, there's multiple ways of doing this. Just like almost everything we've done today is multiple ways of doing it as long as you achieve the same results, you know. So one way is to stitch it up in some type of like a sock or a tube. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set, I have here a small Weber grill. You can use a little smudge pot or, or a hole in the ground or anything to get some fire. I like to use a small Weber grill. I use it in, I use it in my smokehouse and everywhere because I can regulate the heat in it by opening up the bottoms and the top. So what I got here, my intentions are, is this stovepipe here. Hang on that for a second. I'm going to put the lid on. And then the smoke's going to come up through there. And then I'm going to have this part of it and see how the smoke's coming in there. I'm going to drape this over the top of that and let that come up with smoke. That's the intention of it. So one of the things that you're going to have to do is and helps a lot if you got some method of spreading this sock apart. What I'm going to use is a little coat hanger. I'll bend it one way and then I'll bend it the other way and I kind of make it a spreader in there. I'll stick that up in there, straighten that hook out and then I'll put it up through the top. Find a hole, doesn't really matter. Now I'll kind of spread it out a little bit on top. Put my little hook back in there. And you want to have some way of suspending it. You can use a tree limb or whatever. And I'll get it situated. Sometimes it all works nice too if you had a piece of fabric around the bottom as a skirt. That way you get even, even amount of smoke coming up through the top and it smokes evenly. So we'll set it up just like that and get some smoke going up through there. 
thing about your choice of wood. Now, the wood that I'm using, it's not what you know, normally would smoke, like say hams or bacons or something like that. It's, it's basically rotten wood, not rotted all the way. It's more like a punk wood type of, of, of wood and uh, just a, a hint of moisture still in it so it puts out a lot of smoke. And, and the, the species of tree, some species put out a different darkness of, of smoke, but I think that like a, a, a poplar tree or a member of the cottonwood family puts a nice yellow smoke to it. So that's what we're using today for as far as the wood goes. Now we're gonna smoke this, this hide. We're gonna just keep watching it. Every day, different days are different. Sometimes it takes the smoke faster and sometimes it t takes a little bit longer, but we'll keep smoking it and keep looking at it until it gets, the outside starts getting a little bit, you can see the, the smoking come Kinda change like of color. color. Yeah, it doesn't get too much. And then you can be able to see it along the edges too as it works itself in there. And we'll just periodically check it and then when it comes time to like it's starting to we look like it has a pretty good layer of smoke on the inside we'll just flip it inside out and then smoke the other side so we're actually smoking it twice well there you go those are the many steps of doing a brain tanned deer hide mm -hmm. we've got some beautiful buckskin that we're going to end up with once it comes off the smoker and in fact you can then turn it into products that you can use we've talked about clothing and other things what have you got here that you've done? Well, this is this is the top to one of the buckskin outfit of myself that I've I made and put together. It took uh, I'd say probably four deer hides all together really? for this one. Yeah, because if you count, you know, the full pieces. If yeah. you count the full pieces, one, two, three, front and the back. Okay. See, so you know that that one there. Yeah. This nice little pouch here. Mm -hmm. Now that one would have took maybe one deer hide to do that, you know, because there's multiple layers of stuff in there. So, so if you wanted to do a shirt and pants, six to six, eight, six to eight deer. Yeah, probably to get it real. Depends on now this one, you know, depends on fringe and everything okay, else, sure. you know. So off the all, but yes, you'll end up with a real nice, durable uh, hunting garment or just something to, you know, I don't know talk about to have something to that's right something to wear when you're going to a rendezvous <laughs> well, with muzzle loaders or or to the, yeah. your hunting camp for the weekend or something <laughs> sure that's great well i really appreciate you sharing your expertise and knowledge with us today uh, if you want to find out more about the backwoodsman's institute and some of the videos that these guys produce you can go to youtube and type in Backwoodsman's Institute and you'll find a wide variety of subjects that they've produced some informational videos on. Scott and uh, uh, Logan, I really appreciate the time today and uh, we'll be back right here next time on Indiana Outdoor Adventures.